Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ultimate YouTube channel all about world music and psychology. Going all around the world with you on these special rides and excited to check out more amazing music with you today. Make sure to subscribe and here we go. It's perfect for you. Oh, she's like singing out of my soul. Sometimes we get lost in our own little world but it's all so much bigger than we realize. I want to check out a, a song with you that is, that's been out there for quite a minute and I haven't listened to it in years. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've ever fully listened to it or properly paid attention to it. This is about Green Day, Green Day, when September ends. Wake me up when September ends. Over 219 million views. The YouTube video, the official music video was put on YouTube 14 years ago from Rodeo, California, American rock band formed in 87, year I was born, as a punk project initially titled Sweet Children. You know, they say life is short. They say you wake up one day and on that day, all of your dreams and everything you wished for and you wanted are gone just like that, you know? People, people get old and you know, things change and, and situations change and what I want is I just, I want this moment right now, this day. And my feelings for you, the way you look right now, the way I look at you, I just want this to last forever, you know? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, no matter what, we've always had this and had each other. I don't know, nothing can change that. But I, this way, you know, no matter what, you always have somebody here for you. Uh, always, I'm, I'm never gonna leave you. I'm never gonna leave you. I love you. I'm so freaked out by this scene. <laughs> We're a minute and a half in and the song hasn't even started. But I'm confused because it's so, there's something weird about this scene that has me going, mm, I can relate to the romantic idea, the idea of wanting things to last forever. But where is this going? Is he about to kill her? Is she going to kill him? Does it turn out that he or she cheated? What is happening? I don't know. Maybe it's tr truly just that they're expressing their love for each other. I don't know. I know. I know. Don't ever leave me. I won't. Don't ever leave me. I won't. can never last wake me up when September ends like my father's come to pass seven years has gone so fast wake me up when September Coming who we are as my memory rests, but never forgets what I lost. Wake me up when September ends. You didn't tell me you didn't do what? Tell me you didn't do it. Stop, just listen. Oh, no. How can you do this to me? How can you do this? Oh my god! Oh my god! Wait, I 
I thought of all people you would understand. Why don't you understand? I did this for us! us? I did it for us! This oh is supposed God, to make God, it easier! No, no. I thought you'd be proud of me. I thought at least of all people, you would understand why I did this! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, you know, no matter what, you always have somebody here for you. I'm never gonna leave you. Hmm. I never know quite... Well, no, not never. Let me not say never. Let me say right now. In this situation, I'm trying to process how to navigate my feelings and all the things I'm thinking. My desire is to be real with you guys, to bring you real talk, real reactions, and share why something speaks to me, how it's personal to me, but at the same time, look at it from a psychological or philosophical um, angle, come at it with an educational perspective, try to pull out something. And right now I'm feeling torn because my mind is going in all these different places from how we can interpret the lyrics, how we can interpret this music video, from an anthropological and sociological standpoint, when we look at society, anthropology, how people work, um, from a psychological angle, right, how people develop the things we long for in our youth and in our adulthood, that dichotomy between the innocence of our youth and how hard life really is once we become adults. But then at the same time, there's part of me that wants to cry for personal reasons, because there's something about, I, I never knew what this song was about. I know this song. I never knew what this song was about. I've never watched the music video. I never knew what this song was about. I never listened to it enough. For some reason, the hook is so catchy that you can easily remember that. Da, 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 da. 
And even that bridge, right? And the, the chord progression and that hook and the bridge is pretty catchy. It gets stuck in your head. But it was never one of those songs that I'm like, ah, I need this on my personal playlist. I'm going to listen to this, dive into it, figure out what it means. And it just really, it, it connects to my identity on a personal level. That song's not that for me. It wasn't. But now that I'm watching this video and it sheds a completely different angle on what this song is about, but also seeing that era, the her clothing of that young lady, a young couple, seeing different elements that feel nostalgic to me, it does hit her more personal than I would have ever expected. And that's what's weird with music. You could hear a song either for the first time or not, and it hits us differently now versus when we first heard it versus if it meant something to us specifically or if it was just a song in passing that we knew was popular and played on the radio. I know this song would play on the radio in Germany. And I just see myself in this young lady, those, um, these schlackhosen, and those jeans, bell-bottom pants-ish, not quite as bell-bottom as the 60s, 70s, but in the 90s still having that low-cut jeans, slight bell-bottom, the spaghetti tops, and this young couple out in the field. And, you know, personally, I'm like, I, when I was young as a teenager, um, even young adult, I was never in a, a lovey-dovey long-term relationship like this where you're dating and you're high school sweethearts and you want to be together forever. I had crushes and I fell in love and I hoped and wanted and wished. But the, the person or people that I thought I would end up you know, being with or marrying, I didn't work out. It was either unrequited or it was just not meant to be. And so you meet people, you you know, you have your life, your upbringing, but I never was in that sweet high school sweetheart long-term relationship. So that part I can't relate to, but I can relate to the longing for it. I can relate to being a teenager, young adult, and longing for that type of relationship. And then for me, experiencing long-term relationships and that type of dynamic came later. But I would watch the movies, I would listen to the songs, I would have a crush, I would long for that type of love, right? You want someone to see you and know you. And so these two people in the field talking to one another about how much they love each other, how much they hope this never ends, I think that in itself is universally relatable, regardless if you had a relationship like that or not. There's this desire to be seen by someone, to be fully known, and for them to stay. And I think psychologically that may tap into our existential fears because of our mortality, because we know that all things end, including our life. Nothing stays. People come and go. We see people pass around us as we leave, as we get older. School comes to an end. We graduate. Our children leave the house. Like As life moves on, things end, right? The law of entropy is constantly surrounding us, even something as simple as our coffee cup getting cold if we don't keep it warm. We always have to actively work towards keeping things going, keeping things alive. And so because our, our experience in the real world is that things end and change, seasons, etc., I think there's this desire in us to want something that is eternal and to want to be known and loved because it's painful to be left behind. It's painful for things to come to an end. It puts us out of control. And for her and him to express this love, to wish this moment lasts forever. And then life goes on. They're sharing these wonderful memories. It looks like they may have gotten married, right? They're smashing cake in each other's face. It's this 90s vibe, complete nostalgia for those of us who have lived through that era. Now, seeing two young adults who are trying to figure life out. And now adulthood and marriage and life kicks in. And when she came crying on the porch and she was crying the way she was, I thought he cheated. And I, my heart hurt for her because when a man or a woman finds out the person they love and have been intimate with and have given themselves to has betrayed them, be it through emotionally, physically, or lied, or done something that breaks that trust, it, it, it crushes you because our identity is so closely knit together with the people we love and care for and the way that we open our heart, the way we hope it's requ um, requited, the way that we want to trust and be trusted. And so as she kept crying and he now starts screaming, saying, I did this for us, the whole situation shifted. Clearly, this was not about cheating. It was about, and I thought maybe he broke some type of law, stole something, trying to put them in a better financial situation, and now he's going to jail. But it turned out he was going to basic training. He joined the military. And it looks like he decided to join the military to enlist without her knowing. And his idea was, I'm doing this for us. Perhaps he wanted to provide for his wife and felt like joining the military would give him those benefits and that security that he otherwise could not, working some nine to five somewhere. It, being an adult now, moving away from that youthful nostalgia of longing for a boyfriend somewhere, making out in the fields, I can now relate to the adult part 
of a relationship of a, of a marriage where you're devastated because your spouse may or may not have made a decision that you don't agree with or that they did without your knowledge. And so my mind is in all these different places of relatability versus empathy, thinking to myself, man, you know, you guys got to discuss these things. He should have discussed this with you before he enlists, yada, yada. But at the end of the day, even if she disagreed, what is he going to do? Right? Is he going to stick to what he believes is best for his family? You got all these dynamics between a man and a woman, between individuals in relationship and in and of themselves. He claims he did it for both of them very well, possibly true. Perhaps there was also a part of him, however, that in his existential fears, longed to do something more of value than just living his day-to-day, nine-to-five, providing for his wife and maybe having kids one day. Maybe this was not just about financial security and providing for her. Maybe there was a sense of desire to do something for himself, stand for something, fight for his country. He feels horribly betrayed. How could you do this? Because she's left behind now, perhaps in her to a mix of feelings, for her, perhaps a frustration because of a lack of control. She can't you know, force him to stay, perhaps frustration that he didn't talk to her about it and just went ahead and did it. Um, maybe, you know, this desire for him to have communicated and consulted her and then made the decision together versus him just her feeling blindsided and thus betrayed. Perhaps there's a fear for his life, knowing that this may mean the end of his. This fear of being alone now, a military wife, often left to her own demise. So many dynamics, a lot of fear, a lot of in, in uncertainty. And so he now joins the military. Now see the scene is changing to military, very to uh, uh, warfare, very fitting to the bridge kicking in. And from a musical composition standpoint, the hook was very catchy. I think that's why this song was so popular around the world. And even I remember growing up and playing in Germany. It's just this really catchy hook. But I had no idea what this was about. And so the rock, that straightforward rock, some of these... Um, the timber of his voice and some of the the fluctuations in his voice and yet a clean and clear rock voice was fitting to this track. A very catchy hook, very catchy bridge. Now as I'm on this journey of exploring other bands like Led Zeppelin and Rush, it's interesting to me to see the different types of music genres even within one genre such as rock and to see the evolution of it, right? Where you have very intricate compositions when you look at classical music to where you have rock compositions like Led Zeppelin, like Rush, where there's so much skill and talent and art happening simultaneously that makes it very intricate to now moving towards the 90s where I feel like a lot of rock at least the mainstream bands or those that played on the radio were very straightforward. You got your verse, chorus, verse, bridge, back to the chorus and you close out. And you got your, you know, instruments, at least in the West, your straightforward guitar, drums, keyboard, right? All those things. And it builds a fairly straightforward skeleton of a composition that now you can build on. And here, I think what adds to a lot of the emotion is beyond that composition. It's the music video. It's the lyrics. It's it's this, this idea of wake me up when September ends. I interpret that as wake me up when it's over. You have this summer love. You have... You have this beautiful bliss throughout the summer months and then September comes around and I feel like that implies the end of summer, right? You got a new school year, you got that idea of back to the motions. And so just for someone to say, wake me up when that ends, perhaps that's this idea of wake me up when that part is over, that uncomfortable getting back into your post summer blues. Um, or it doesn't mean wake me up when all of this bliss is over, September being that final stage of summer. It could be taken different ways. The story behind the song, someone said, Green Day lead singer Billy Joe Armstrong wrote this song about his father who died of cancer in 82 when Billy was 10. At his father's funeral, Billy cried, ran home and locked himself in his room. When his mother got home and knocked on the door to Billy's room, Billy simply said, wake me up when September ends, hence the title. Wow, that is interesting which is crazy that this is a song that's 20 years old, I guess. Wow. Based on what the song is about and his father passing a young boy losing his dad, someone who he wanted to be with him forever. That makes me sad. It's going to make me cry all over again. To then say, wake me up when September ends. Wake me up when it's over. I don't want to be awake for this. And for her then to say in the end, I will always, you'll always have someone to be with you. Perhaps that was also a nod to the um, 
Billy Joe Armstrong not Billy Joe Armstrong's nod to that desire for us to always have someone there or perhaps the hope of his father saying that to him I'll always be with you you'll always have somebody um those who move on who we lose they still are with us in our heart and our memories perhaps in spirit really heavy really sad this is sad this is hard Wow, what do you think? What does this song mean to you? I never listened to it in this detail, never watched the music video, and I've never really paid attention to what this might mean. And it's crazy how, as we're young and innocent, as it speaks of the innocence dying, and even in the song, as we're young and innocent, we don't know, we listen to songs and they play on the radio and you just go about your motion, having no idea what that song meant to the singer, why the singer wrote it, what he or she experienced for us now to grow into adulthood past our youthful innocent years and listen to music in a completely new way 